Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm LJ if you're new here. So today's video is going to be a full face of drugstore and affordable makeup products. So I recently went to Ulta, bought a whole bunch of things. I'm gonna be creating this look with everything that I got from Ulta. And this video is also going to be very detailed because you guys say you guys really enjoy my detailed videos. So I'm going to be also going into the details of how I'm applying the makeup. So if you're interested in seeing this video, then keep on watching. KLJ, welcome to a channel where it's popping. Mm, welcome to a YouTube. All right, so today's video is going to be a full face of drugstore makeup. So I recently went to Ulta and picked up a whole bunch of drugstore makeup products. So this video is also going to be a very detailed video. First things first, I always start by priming my skin. You guys know primer is the most important thing for me when it comes to prepping my skin for makeup because it helps to grip my makeup, makes it last longer. So I picked up this e.l.f. Jelly Pop Primer. When I used this, it was very similar to the milk hydro grip primer it's very sticky has that sticky consistency so I'm gonna see how it works on my skin so I'm just taking about two pumps of this and I'm gonna focus it around this area of my cheeks and on my forehead and then I'm just gonna tap whatever's left around my nose area it's very similar to the Milk Hydro Grip Primer, but this one is more stickier, so I'm hoping it can really help to grip my foundation. So for foundation, I got this Smith & Colt Veil Threat Weightless Foundation. I got it in the shade 410 Warm. This is looking like it's a little bit too yellow and light for my skin. And with foundation, I usually like to make sure that my foundation is a perfect match like very very close to my skin because I feel like that gives my makeup a very seamless look so because this is too light I do want to mix this just so that I get the perfect match especially with drugstore makeup foundation is really hard to find a perfect match so typically with foundation I'm always mixing when it comes to drugstore makeup so I'm gonna mix it with this Maybelline Superstay foundation in the shade 360 mocha this is usually a little bit too red and dark for my skin so I feel like mixing these two together will give me that perfect match. As you guys can see, the foundation looks like almost a perfect match. It's the same undertone. I like to match my foundation with the rest of my skin, so including like my hands, my face, and my neck, just so that they are all the same undertone. My face is a little bit darker than the rest of my body, so I kind of like to make it almost one shade. So honestly, I can say this foundation, bomb.com. All right, now for concealer, I'm gonna use the Maybelline Superstay Concealer in the shade Tan 45. So this concealer is a full coverage concealer. So I'm gonna go really lightly just because I haven't really been using too much concealer and with concealer of course you guys already know how I like to apply my concealer I like to focus only on the areas under my eyes that have that darkness and then I'm gonna apply a small amount on my forehead my nose area and my chin and then I'm gonna go ahead and apply contour while I let this concealer really like get really tacky. So for contour, I'm gonna use the Black Opal Foundation Stick in the shade Cafe. I'm gonna apply a small amount because it seems like this shade is really, really dark. But with contour and concealer, I also like to get the same undertone as my skin tone just because even if it's too dark, it's easy for you to just mix it with the foundation and it will be like really seamless. So because this is a little bit dark, I'm gonna apply a small amount. I'm also gonna place some on my jawline right here to structure that as well i like using foundation sticks for contours instead of actual contours because foundation sticks are much easier to blend so i'm going to use a beauty blender but i'm going to use the round side of the beauty blender just to tap on that and i like to make sure that the beauty blender is damp so that it gives me that smooth blend So with contour, you definitely want to bring the contour close to your hairline so that it mends it really well with your scalp. And if you have a big forehead like your girl over here, you wanna put a little bit of contour right there, especially if the foundation is really showing around that area, you just wanna place a little bit of contour there.
and I got this elf sponge so this is the camel sponge it's a concealer sponge I feel like it's perfect very skinny I've always wanted to get this sponge and I finally have it so I'm gonna try it out and see how it blends the concealer okay it gives a pretty smooth blend I like it it's very convenient because it fits perfectly under your eyes so it's a little bit easier than you using like a big sponge like this one to blend the under eye it occupies a lot of space so therefore your concealer will be blended all the way down here which you want to avoid I usually prefer using smaller sponges and this one is perfect Perfect because it literally only focuses on my under eye versus down around this area I'm gonna go ahead and blend out my forehead so this concealer is definitely full coverage concealer but it's really creamy and nice and I feel like the shade is also perfect so I'm gonna go back in with the sponge that I use for the foundation and around these areas right here where you can see that concealer I like to go over those areas with a little bit of what was left on the sponge with the foundation and just kind of clear that out and it kind of gives a seamless look so you don't really see those lines of demarcation and I also like to take the sponge and go over my under eye area and around this area so that you don't see that sharp line going all the way out and this just helps to diffuse the makeup lines and makes it look really nice and natural all right so now i'm gonna go ahead and contour my nose i'm gonna use that same black opal and with the nose contour i like to just place that foundation stick right where the bridge of my nose is close to my eyebrows which is right here And then I like to use an angled nose contouring brush. It can be an eyeshadow brush or a nose contouring brush. This is the Morphe E62 brush, which is my favorite. And usually what I do is I just take the nose contour and brush it up towards my eyebrows. And that will kind of help to diffuse it so that you don't really see that sharpness. And then whatever's left, I just drag it all the way down. And then once I blend that out, I go back in with the concealer and I place it on the bridge of my nose and around this area as well. And then using a very small brush like this one right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and blend out the concealer. And this helps to sharpen up that nose contour. It's very similar to reverse contour. All right, so next I'm gonna move on to setting powder. So for setting powder, I got this Milani Translucent Medium to Deep Setting Powder. And I'm gonna use that same sponge that I used to blend out my concealer, which is the Camo sponge. Press on that powder. And with setting powder, usually when I don't really know what the shade is gonna look like or if it's gonna be full coverage, I like to just take a little bit on the sponge and just press it at the back of my hand like this to get rid of the excess and then press it right underneath my eyes to set that concealer and this just helps to prevent you from using too much setting powder if you use too much setting powder your under eyes tend to get really dry so if you're feeling like your under eyes are really really dry after setting it try using a smaller amount and press it at the back of your hand to get rid of that excess powder and i'm gonna take that setting powder and run it through the bridge of my nose to set that concealer that i place over there and also on my forehead and taking the setting powder, I'm gonna place it at the tip of the sponge and I'm gonna use that for reverse contour. And with reverse contour, I like to focus it around this area. I don't bring it down all the way here just because I feel like it gives me more of a structured look. Then I'm gonna take that whatever is left on the sponge, just run that through the contour, my forehead area, and it's gonna help just set everything else. All right, so now I'm gonna apply bronzer. So I didn't get a new bronzer just because I feel like bronzers are really hard to find when it comes to drugstore, but I'm gonna go in with this Makeup Revolution Glow Splendor Bronzer in the shade Dark. I'm just gonna apply a little bit of bronzer, and I like to apply bronzer on top of contour, especially if the contour gives me more of a cool toned look. Bronzer are just basically adds warmth back onto my skin. And with the bronzer, I mainly focus it around my hairline area where I place the contour. But I like to focus around this area. I don't usually bring the bronzer all the way in here. It's because I feel like the shadow really just should be reflected around this area. 
And then for blush, I got this J-Cat Beauty Blush Mallow. And this is in the shade Berries and Cream. It seems like it's really nice and deep and it's perfect for brown skin. So I'm going to use a small amount. And with blush, I like to build it up because I don't like going in with too much. And then you can't really take away from what you've already applied. So I usually like to apply it at the back of my hand first. Just to make sure I'm getting rid of excess. And I focus my blush on the apples of my cheeks first. And then I just bring it upwards towards my hairline. So yeah, this blush is definitely really, really pigmented. Very rich. So now I'm going to go in with finishing powder. So with finishing powder, I like to set my under eyes a little bit on my forehead. And that gives me like a nice finished look. This is what gets my makeup to appear really flawless, especially under my eyes. When you have a lot of creasing, you want to apply a finishing powder so that it kind of smoothens everything out. So a finishing powder that I got is the NYX Professional HD Finishing Powder in the shade Banana. Now, this looks like it's a little bit too light. So I do have to go in with a very small amount. And I like to use Use the sponge that I used for the concealer and setting powder but I'm gonna use a clean side and I just like to play oh <laughs> that was really bright so with this amount I'm gonna use that to really just press that underneath my eyes and if it's too light remember to use a very very small amount And so I'm going to place a little bit of that powder on my forehead as well. And I typically just focus only on my under eyes and my forehead. I don't usually bring it like right here, reverse contour. I don't use it like as regular setting powder. I just use it for a little bit of my T-zone area and under my eyes. And also this step is very much optional. You don't have to do this. I just feel like whenever I do this, my makeup just looks a little bit more seamless. So now I'm going to go ahead and spray my face. And I got this Milani Make It Last Dewy Setting Spray. I've wanted to try this for a minute now. So here we go. So I'm going to spray a little bit. So I'm going to let this sit for about two minutes and then I'm going to come back to do my eyes. All right, so now I'm going to work on my eyes. I'm starting off with my eyebrows and typically with the eyebrows, I like to keep them very simple and natural and kind of like draw out eyebrow hairs on my eyebrows. So I got this Milani Weekend Brow Tint. This is a brow pen, very similar to the one that I usually use by Anastasia. I usually use the brow pen. I got one by Milani Cosmetics and this in the shade Espresso. So with the eyebrow product, you definitely want to get one that is closer to the colors of your eyebrow hairs because it's going to give you a more natural and realistic look. So what I like to do is I like to use the product and go in the direction my eyebrow hairs are pointing and just kind of fill them in with eyebrow hairs. And I'm just lightly using it. I'm not being too heavy handed because when you be too heavy handed, it's going to put a lot of pigment on there and then they'll actually start looking like artificial. So you just want to go lightly. So when I come to the front of my eyebrows I just draw eyebrow hairs pointing upward versus slanted like this area right here I draw them pointing upwards because that's how my eyebrows point at the front and so once I draw them I like to take a spoolie and just brush them upwards so that they mend really nicely with my natural eyebrows and then if you see any spaces around your eyebrows you want to go back in and draw that out all right so now I'm gonna work on my eyes and I like to keep my eyes very simple so I'm gonna start off by applying concealer and I'm gonna use the L'Oreal infallible full wear concealer to prime my eyelids I like using a matte concealer for the eyelid area it gets rid of the oils on there And the reason why I like using a concealer on my eyelids instead of an eyeshadow primer, just because I feel like it mends really nicely with my skin. I, so for my eyes, I usually like taking the bronzer that I used for my skin. And I like to just pack that bronzer shade on the outer portion of my crease. Once I pack that on there, I just like to kind of drag this towards the inner portion and fade it off a little bit. And then I like to go in with a clean blending brush and I just blend out those harsh lines.
And then next for my eyelid shade, I'm gonna use this e.l.f. highlighter. So I like to use things that I use on my skin for my eyes just because I feel like they'll go really well with my complexion products. So I've used a bronzer and now I'm gonna go in with a highlighter. And this is gonna be the same highlighter I'm gonna apply on my cheekbones for the highlighted effect. So I'm gonna use a little bit of that highlighter and press that on my eyelid area. So with the eyelid area, I like to focus first on the inner portion and then I bring it all the way up towards where my crease area is. And then the very little that's left on the brush, I bring this towards the outer portion of my eyes just so that it blends really nicely with that brown shadow. All right, so I'm gonna use a little bit of that bronzer and I'm gonna smudge that right underneath my eyes. All right, next I'm gonna use eyeliner. I usually like using a felt tip eyeliner, so I got the one by Essence. This is the Super Fine Eyeliner Pen. So what I do is I create a very thin eyeliner right where my lash line is. And this is good if you have smaller eyes. You definitely want to make your eyeliner very small if you applied eyeshadow, just so that you have more space where the eyeshadow shows versus the eyeliner. You don't want the eyeliner to take away from your eyeshadow look. What I do is I literally just press that eyeliner i don't really like draw it out i literally just take it and i press it right where my lash line is and then if you like you can draw a wing which is totally optional just all based on preference All right, so next I'm gonna go ahead and use mascara. So I got this e.l.f. waterproof mascara and I'm applying this mascara on my top and bottom eyelashes. All right, so now it's time to complete the face. So I'm gonna go in with that e.l.f. highlighter and this is the apricot glow highlighter. So I'm just gonna place this on the highest points of my cheekbones right here where I want to have that really nice highlighted look. And one thing about highlighter, you definitely want to build it up. You don't want to go in with a lot because I feel like it will be really hard to blend and it will just be sitting on your skin. You want the highlighter to give you that nice glow so when you turn around, it looks natural. It looks like your skin is glowing from underneath. Okay, I already love this highlighter. It's not powdery, it's more so of a highlighter than a powder. When I turn like this, you don't really see the highlighter, but when I turn on the side, you can see that natural glow. So I'm gonna place some on my forehead. I usually don't like placing powdery highlighters on my forehead, just because you'll be able to see that powder. But when a highlighter really melts into your skin, I like to place it on the forehead so it gives me that natural glow. And then I'm gonna place some on my cupid's bow. And then using my ring finger, I like to place the highlighter at the pointy part of my nose, which I usually call the button of my nose. And then placing a little bit right here, right where the bridge of my nose is. And then I'm gonna go in with the setting spray again, just to allow all this makeup to melt onto my skin. I actually really like the setting spray. It spritz the spray really nice, so it diffuses all over your skin, versus a setting spray that the sprayer just goes right directly into your face. I like this because it doesn't spray too much. So I'm just going to let this sink into my skin and then I'm gonna go ahead and work on my lips. All right, so for lip liner, I got the LA Girl Shockwave Nude Lip Liner in the shade Chai Latte. And then for lipstick, I'm gonna use this Revlon Glass Shine Lipstick. So I got this NYX Cosmetics Shine Loud Magic Maker Lipstick, but this one is a little bit too light for my lips. Online, it looked like it was like really dark and rich. So I decided to get it, but looking at it, I don't think it's gonna work for my lips because I have dark lips. So I'm gonna just go in with this Revlon one. This is the shade Toasting Glasses.
Okay, so here we have it with this drugstore makeup look. This is the final look. Everything I've used here, honestly, I really love. So I would recommend all of these products. And I love how the look turned out. It really turned out really nice, natural, seamless. It definitely came out like a full coverage makeup look, but it still really blends in with my skin. It's not like too loud or anything. So honestly, I love, love, love all these products. The only thing I would say is with this NYX HD finishing powder, you do have to be very careful if you are brown skin or you're of a deeper skin tone because I do feel like it can cause a flashback when you take a picture you only want to use the powder when you're not about to take a picture with flash but if you're not taking a picture with flash I would say it's a good powder to really add that flawlessness under your eyes I really like adding a finishing powder underneath because it prevents the creasing and it gives me that nice flawless finish so I like the powder but I would just say be careful because it can cause a flashback but everything else, honestly, is bomb.com. I would recommend all these products. You can find all the products linked in the description box down below if you're interested in checking any of them out. But yeah, that's it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up on this video if you really enjoyed this video. And also subscribe because I would love to have you on the LJ family. And shout outs to my new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining the family. But other than that, I will see you guys in my next video. Welcome to a channel where it's popping